and then Shia Skiff in Newcastle. He had a six-cylinder Chevy engine in it after that. Tell me, tell me about the shad industry in Newcastle and uh, its importance. Maybe there are those who are older than I that might be able to give you uh, a better insight on that, but I can repeat to you what my dad told me. I think there may not be too many people around today that, that really remember it in, when it was at its peak. But it was my understanding that literally there was a railroad spur down on Delaware Street or put there solely to service this shad industry and that the shad fleet uh, that brought these uh, uh, brought them in, these, these uh, fish were delivered uh, all over the country. And, uh, and uh, iced uh, down in, in uh, big cartons. Uh, the shad industry, I think, was a, a, an important industry in a small town. Uh, there were a good many men that, that made their livelihoods uh, fishing the river. Uh, it, uh, the, the, uh, this was a spring, uh, an April, in that. Uh, period of time. I'm not certain how many weeks literally the shad ran, but uh, in, the, in this period of time there was a great deal of money to be made down there and there a great many men in Newcastle were involved in it. I don't know, again, at the peak of the season just how many boats were involved. Uh, when I was a, a kid I can remember uh, there were about, uh, I'd say, half a dozen shad skiffs still left, still operating, uh, tied off the Delaware Street Wharf. Uh, Molt Rogers uh, had one called the Neptune, I think, which was sort of the flagship of the fleet. Molt was one of the last to give it up. The, uh, the shad skiffs themselves, uh, the boats themselves, were interesting. They originally were sailboats. That goes back before anything that I can remember or recollect, but I know that the basic design of the halls that are, I think there is a Shad Skiff uh, hall. St oh, there's one still operating around here called the Red Dog uh, that I've seen pictures of in the paper. Uh, that's an original Shad, Shad Skiff hall. And there's also one in the uh, Maritime Museum down at St. Michael's. Uh, for anyone that would really, really be interested in what those boats really look like, that they can go to St. Mike's and see it. It's in a shed there. But they were originally designed as sailboats, and then uh, I think that this is a period of time, literally, when the shad industry was uh, at its peak. Uh, then along came the naphtha, or the gasoline engines later, and the, uh, they put these uh, little one-cylinder gas engines in these sailboats and did away with the rigging. The dragging of nets out there, or the laying of nets, I should say, is a, is a job in its own, and to go out there with a sailboat and try to do this would have really taken a lot of work. But once the engines were put into boats, I think it reduced their labor efforts quite a bit and uh, increased their catches. Uh, but. I think I came along just about in most of us uh, here in town that can remember the Shad Skiffs came along just about the time it was over. It was waning. But I do remember that my father and mother used to uh, hand me a quarter and tell me to go down and, and, uh, and get a, a Shad, the biggest one you can get for a quarter. And I had the uh, Elgin bicycle that had a wide pair of handlebars on it, and uh, I could hook my thumb around the tail of the fish and stick my other thumb in its mouth, and that's the way I'd bring it home, right across the handlebars of the bike. And uh, I think the most popular way they they prepared them, at least my mother always fried them, and uh, you clean them right there in, in the backyard, and uh, and then cut them in slices and fry them. And they, if you had the patience to pick the bones out of them, they're a delicious fish. But they, they just had millions and millions of bones. But uh, 
it, it, it was worth the effort, I think.